Did you know you can grow fresh crops even after the first frost? Let me show you how we're doing it up here in cold Canada using a little bit of careful planning, caterpillar tunnels, and our greenhouses. I'm Luke Sheldrick. My wife Dana and I make a living owning Terramore Farm where we grow organic vegetables and cut flowers. We service over 80 weekly CSA subscriptions, local retailers, some of the top restaurants in Ottawa and three farmers markets. When we're talking about season extension, we're not talking about farming in the frigid cold, although you could if you want. We're talking about using the time in the shoulder seasons to capitalize on the amount of income you can make. And that's using existing infrastructure or minor investments. One more major benefit is also being able to offer products that are not normally offered in your community. So you're gonna have the opportunity to make new connections with restaurants, uh, retailers, and even just customers. You're gonna have better clout within your community. You're the farm that is offering products that other farms or not so this is really good for your local image throughout this video we're going to cover how we're growing in the winter what varieties we're choosing why and where we're planting them like what infrastructure we're putting them in so check it out it's going to be quick we're going to walk you through all of it and hopefully by the end you're convinced to start growing more in the winter This video is brought to you by Tessier. We've been using their caterpillar tunnels for years. They're amazing, so easy to assemble, disassemble, move, and they offer incredible opportunity for season extension, both in spring and fall, as well as improved yields in the summer. As an added bonus, they partnered with the Market Gardener Institute, which you know I'm a huge supporter of, and I love high value information. They are offering a massive discount when you purchase a caterpillar tunnel on the winter growing mini course. That is what we've followed here to learn everything that we're learning, improve everything that we're doing, and make sure we're maximizing on the space that we're using. Details about the promotion are in the description, and now we're gonna walk you through what all of this looks like on our farm here at Terramore, and it's gonna be great. Before we get into the details about what we're growing, let's talk about caterpillar tunnels and why they're so incredible. So, their super simple design can be assembled with two to three people in one morning. It's just rebar that goes into the ground. These posts fit over top. And then this is fastened down by strings, which are tightened, which go back and forth across. They provide obviously all of the materials you need. And the quick assembly allows for really, really improved flexibility in your growth. So in the springtime, for example, we have our radish and turnip or salad in here. And then when it's just getting too hot or hot enough to be able to plant, say, peppers or eggplants, we can just move this off of the established crop in one morning and put it right where we want to have our eggplants. So our summer crop is there. And then alternatively, we can do the same thing in the fall. So that's what we've done here. And we've got salad ready to go to market next week. We're almost in October, and that would not be the case without this structure. So in this caterpillar tunnel, our direct seeded crops, we have a bed of radish here, turnip here. They're sharing an insect netting. Even in the fall, just to be extra cautious, we don't want to be susceptible to bugs, so we're doing that as well. And then in these two beds, we have direct seeded greens. So we have one full bed of arugula and one full bed of baby kale. An added benefit to growing in the colder temperatures is that crops will stay in the field longer. So in the spring, if you've grown arugula, you're aware that it can like, in the span of one week, go from too small to too big. And if you don't have sales avenues for that, it just goes bad in the field. In the colder temps, we can get away with letting this sit in the field for a couple of weeks and just pick away at it. And this is one of the added benefits is that you actually can just take your time. You're not rushing to get it out to market. And the same thing applies in the greenhouses where we're just sort of harvesting slowly instead of needing to take things super quickly before they get overripe. For this tunnel, we're using micro sprinklers and that really helped for the direct seeded crops. When we want to run the tine weeder and things like that, we don't want the drips running down the beds. Uh, but that is a great alternative if you have to, to use drips in these tunnels as well. So if we're thinking about the, the economics of these tunnels, you can see there's a lot of food in this one. And the easier one to think about is the salad one. There's anywhere from three to 500 pounds of salad in that tunnel, depending on whether we get a second cut and, and the quality of it all. 
but you're looking at three to five thousand dollars off of one fall harvest so when i say they're easy to pay back they're more than paying themselves back in one season when you factor, factor in spring summer and fall growing so these caterpillar tunnels are an incredible investment right here's another great example of where we're going to be putting a cat tunnel so we've got four beautiful beds of kale that we want us to last into into november so in our next video, we're actually gonna be showing you how we're gonna be constructing a Tessier cat tunnel that's gothic, so it'll be able to shed snow, and it's gonna be right over top of all four of these. So that's another way you can pre-grow the crop and then assemble the cat tunnel over top. So here's another great example. This cat tunnel right here had summer tomatoes and basil in it, and then we're just gonna move it right up here. Let's take a little walk. And then we've got some spinach well-established up here and it's gonna hop over here and then hopefully, I doubt these things will overwinter, but it will definitely extend our ability to harvest into November again. So check out this really well, beautifully established spinach, voila. So now we're in the unheated greenhouse and I'm going to tell you about all the crops that we're growing, but first I wanna do one more plug on why growing in the shoulder season, especially in the fall into winter is amazing. We're gonna be working anyways here on the farm, packing up, and if I can employ the staff longer and have more income coming, why not have better, more work and provide food while we're doing it anyways? So normally we're just packing up, but if we can be picking spinach, packaging it, and selling it at the same time, that's a huge benefit to the bottom line and to your staff to keep them employed and keep pumping out food. So here we are, we've got this unheated greenhouse totally packed. We have crops like Tokyo Bacana over here, Kamatsuna, and then we've got four beds of spinach, and we'll be direct seeding more cold hardy crops on the outside. So one of them will be Claytonia, and the other is going to be Red Russian Baby Kale. So both of those are a little more cold hardy, and we're going to be able to harvest them gradually, and maybe get three, four cuts off, because when I mentioned earlier about having slower growth, you're also able to get longer harvests, so that they're not going to overgrow they'll continue to keep coming back so whereas summertime you get one to two cuts we're looking at three to four cuts for some of these crops so it's really cool benefit to growing in the winter spinach is an absolute winter growing powerhouse it's great to be transplanted although a little bit time consuming but well worth it you can grow it out in the field you can grow it in caterpillar tunnels and in an unheated tunnel you can overwinter it People absolutely love it, and you'll totally be able to sell all that you can grow. So this is the stuff that we've just planted. You saw the stuff in the field that'll keep us going for a while, and then this will be ready right in time to carry us well into December to keep all of our clients happy. So now we're in our partially heated greenhouse. These crops can handle the cold, but not super cold, and we do want them to grow a little bit faster. There are a couple of additional details that I want to cover when thinking about planting for fall or the greenhouse. Number one, most importantly, is when you're filling something this, this large, or no matter what you're planting, no matter your scale at all, you need to have a sales avenue for the crops you're planting. So even though there was a whole plethora of suggested crops in the Market Gardener Institute's course, we chose the ones we could sell because we know our clients. We're going to be selling to retail locations and chefs because our markets will be closed. So our selection is very catered to what those clients like and can sell and can use a lot of. Yours is gonna be different, so make your plans according to your sales avenues. Next up is the opportunity for intercropping. We don't do much of it out in the field in the summertime. Here in the greenhouse in the shoulder season, it's totally worth that extra effort to ensure that you're maximizing every square foot of this growing space. So now we're following some suggestions again from the course and the Market Gardener, Winter Market Gardener book on which crops intercrop well. And also we're adjusting spacing slightly from the way we do it out in the field because we wanna maximize the amount of light that the crops are able to get. So the spacing is completely different for fall planting than, than summer planting. And it's really nice to have these resources because as I say with following someone's education, it's amazing that someone's done it before. We're not fumbling around guessing when we need to plant something for the appropriate time. These things are really, really critical and the fact that someone else has trial and error done it for years and given us the best option is incredible. 
So to give you a clearer picture of what the intercropping is, we've got wonderful, beautiful bok choy spaced at nine inch spacing, three rows. And in the middle, we have kale. The kale will be nice and large just after we crop out these bok choy. Alternatively, on this side here, we have winter boar kale with cilantro. So the opportunity again is the same. By the time the cilantro is cropped out fully picked, the kale will grow in and fill in that space. But we're fully optimizing this growing space to capitalize on as much income as we can. So as I touched on, timing can be absolutely critical. Your crops have to be a certain size by a certain date because our days are getting shorter and shorter throughout the fall and they're not getting the access to light that they need to grow. So having a resource to reference and taking the guesswork out is absolutely incredible. And that's how we're accomplishing this stuff so easily. So here we have a really nice Siberian kale. This is my favorite one for growing in the winter. It's extremely fast growing. And if I could, I probably would have planted more, but we're experimenting with a few different types. Uh, intercropped with it, we have our scallions. That's a great one for us to sell to our retailers and our chefs. And again, same spacing, but really nice intercropping here. Lastly, we have gems. Not probably a typical winter crop, but we know that salad grows well in here. We know we have a sales avenue for these, again, through our chefs and retailers. So we wanted to get something in. And this is, again, cropped in with some kale. And we think it'll be great. Some we would like to experiment more with in the future would include things like parsley and celery because they're crops that we can, again, just pick off bits of and keep growing throughout the fall, similar to that concept with cilantro but they require a much longer period in the cell and we kind of missed our opportunity. So a big part of winter growing is planning ahead. You should be doing your winter if you can get on it. Start planning, well, get what you can in now, but also start planning now for next fall or, or worst case, like April, get it done, get your crop plan done so you're not missing things. Believe it or not, we need to be planting sometimes in June, July for the fall. So that's my hot tip. <music>Thank you so much for watching and thank you to Tessier for bringing you this video. I hope it convinces you to begin at least thinking about extending your season, looking into the investment of a caterpillar tunnel. They're an amazing investment per square foot. Something large like this per square foot is a lot more expensive, but they also do have those and they're top notch as well. So take a look at Tessier, take a look at what they're offering and bring your growing to the next level. Growing in the winter months is an incredible opportunity to extend your season expand your clientele and improve your clout within your community to be the one bringing awesome produce in the month of November and December. So please, I really suggest you take the time to at least consider how you can bring more money to your farm by extending your season. I'm Luke Sheldrick. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Please, in the comments, tell us what you had issues with winter growing or what you're excited about. And also, of course, hit like and subscribe. And we got tons more content coming your way. Give it a hit.